So you've talked about plants producing healthy oils. So um, what do you mean when you um, are talking about that? Well, there's two, two aspects to, to healthy oils. A plant, when we talked a little bit about its putting its sugars in the various spots, if so if it puts a quarter of its sugar into the roots, a quarter out into the soil, a quarter into the, the stalk, and a quarter into the fruit. Now, if there's excess sugar, the plant can actually turn the sugar into fat. Now, some plants in the seeds themselves will have fats. That's mm -hmm. where we get our oils. Let's say, you know, almond oil or whatever. Right. There's a certain amount of fat that it puts into the fruit, but into the plant itself. Now, once, and this is a pretty young plant, so it's probably using most of its, its nutrients and growth right now. Mm -hmm. But as this plant begins to mature a little bit and set on fruit, once it, if it has plenty of nutrients, it begins to get fat. Well, if a plant doesn't get fat like a, you know, big stalk or something, a plant gets fat by putting oil or lipids. Thickness in the, into the, the leaves. Into its leaves and stalks. Okay. Now that oil, then you'll get, you know, a, a healthy plant starts to get a sheen on it. It's kind of like a polish. It starts glowing. So if you look, it starts to glow. <laughs> it's got this like polish on it. Pepper leaves, maybe. Pepper, pepper, pepper leaves, you see that on because they do that relatively quickly. They don't take as much energy as a tomato that grows much more rapidly. So you'll see this sheen on there. When that sheen is on the, on the plant, it is almost impossible for most insects to eat that plant. Wow. It won't, those insects do not see it as food. Then once that plant gets fat, then it begins to produce excess oils above that. And that's where we have essential oils. Now don't okay. confuse that with the essential oils that come in a little bottle, uh, okay. you know, that we might sell for home remedies. It is the same thing. Those are essential oils, but those are typically extracted out of plants that genetically produce a lot of oil, oil. whether they're healthy mm -hmm. or not. Things like, you know, lavender and rose petals and things like that, that actually produce oils as a part of their, the fragrance that mm -hmm. attracts the, uh, their pollinators and things okay. along those lines. Yeah. Uh, these essential oils that get into the, the plant, it also, it does create more of aroma. So if you come into the greenhouse and you smell the, it just smells good, <laughs> smells <Green>. like <laughs> plants everywhere. Um, you just get this, whew, uh, whatever the crop is, those are the essential oils that are exuding out into the air. And the more of those oils, you know, once you have the fat, which also, by the way, is very healthy for a human to eat. Those are um, essential fatty acids. They're very healthy to eat. They're what we, you know, part of the makeup of what we really need. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take a bunch of artificial salmon oils or whatever if our plants are really fat. Okay. I'm not saying that's yeah. bad. Those are good things. But those uh, fatty acids are in plants when they're ha healthy when they're exuding extra, extra fat. The essential oil then begins to come out through the leaf and it creates this aroma throughout the plant. That aroma tells an insect that I am not food. Nature made the plants to, when they're weak, sick, and distressed, they don't put out any of that essential oil. And the they basically put out a smell that tells the insects, I am food, food. Yeah. I'm food, yep. eat me, eat me. So the conventional farmer goes in and he just sprays the bugs out to kill the bugs. Well, it still doesn't have enough nutrients, so the plant's still saying, I am food, eat me. So more bugs come in, more pesticides, more bugs, yep. more pesticides. It's this chemical roller coaster. Whereas a healthy organic plant, it's putting out an essential oil and it says, I'm not food. I'm not food. Yep. And so don't eat me. I'm not food. And because nature made it that way, so the weak get eaten up and die and don't produce a bunch of seed. The healthy ones produce a bunch of seed. 
that's just the way nature made it. So you continually improve the species. So we have better and better and better species when we have healthy plants. So when you talk about genetics, the genetics continue to get stronger because only the healthiest produce the seed and produce the next generation of plants. Mm -hmm. Now in some cases, like what we have right here, we have carrots interwoven with tomatoes. And carrots <clears throat> take a lot longer to produce, their, they, to produce those essential oils. They put a lot of their fat into the root. That's why carrots are so healthy for us because the part that we eat down there under the soil is just loaded with fats and sugars, healthy sugars. We're talking, you know, triglycerides are greater. These are not single mm -hmm. um, monoglycerides in, in, a carrot, in a healthy carrot at least. We're talking the sugars that our body actually uses for energy, not the ones that just make us get hyper. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, it, so a carrot takes a lot longer. So by planting tomatoes, which produce essential oils very, very quickly, with the carrots, it actually confuses the bugs and it says, bugs, I'm not food, and the, and the carrot actually kind of absorbs the tomato's essential oils and says, I'm not food either, even though it may not be saying that on its own. So these are little tricks that you might, so Combine. why, why yes. you grow things like this together. And then mm -hmm. of course these carrots will be coming out before the tomatoes are, you know, really big enough to shade them seriously right. or damage right. anything in any way. So, you know, that's why, you know, carrots love tomatoes. They grow okay. well together. And that's why an organic farmer really doesn't need to use pesticides. If he has a healthy plant, and it's really a pyramid, it's based on uh, multiple things, and really essential oils are at the very top. If you have really high essential oil production, there is no pests, no fungus, there is nothing that will attack that plant. But it's based on you know, several different layers, beginning with the sugars, really simple sugars, monoglycerides, bugs love, sap sucking bugs love simple sugars. And then the next level is your amino acid chain, it's your proteins. So if your protein, a single, a single chain amino acid, very simple amino acids, these are your proteins, bugs love that. The more complex, that more complete the amino mm -hmm. acid is, the better it is for the plant and the less the insect wants to eat that because an insect's digestive system is not designed to eat a complex protein. Right. Just like it's not designed to eat a complex sugar. However, an animal or a human's digestive system is exactly designed to do that. We do not do well on a simple sugar. A fructose is not good for a human. We right. should never eat a simple sugar. A monoglyceride is always going to go straight to our blood sugar and the more monoglycerides we eat, the more, off, more likely we are to get diabetes or hyperglycemia or something along right. those lines. The more complex our sugars, the more likely our, the more happy our body is in, the balance. in balancing that yeah. and using that sugar for energy so we can run marathons mm -hmm. instead of get diabetes. Right. And the same with our protein. You know, the single, single chain amino acids, they're just adding extra protein to our body that then has to be thrown off and it's very difficult for our body to assimilate that to build muscle mass which is really what we want our proteins to do is to build right. our muscles so that we're we can increase our strength and then of course the next level is the fats that I talked about just a little bit ago we're talking the the fats that come into plants that's the next level of health and so the the more fat that's in a plant, the more sleek it gets. Now, you know, in fat, it just doesn't exist in a lot of these plants, at least in the leaves and stuff. It'll exist sometimes in the fruit for mm -hmm. the seed because it gener the plant generates all of its strength to get it into the seed. That's the next generation. So you've got it in the almond or in the pecan or in the, right. you know, whatever that thing, that fruit is, that seed, but it won't be in the plant. And so that's more of a thing that's missing, not that it's incomplete. The, uh, okay. the, uh, the fat's just not there to su in sufficient quantity. Now, if the fat is there, then our body uses that to so omega, all the omega fatty acids. Mm -hmm. And you know, in recent years, we've been hearing more and more about how healthy that is for our body. We take fish oil, we take flax oil, we take these various omega things. Omega-6s versus omega-3s. 
yeah, plant, it, plant has it all in balance. We don't have to worry about all the different things. If we have a healthy plant that's actually had enough sugar to create the complex sugars and have excess to create fat. And then essential oils is kind of at the very top of that. So in the very healthiest of plants, that's when they begin to exude exorbitant amounts of essential oils and it just, yes. That's when you have a, it's really kind of at the top of the, top of the health chain. Top of. And conventional agriculture doesn't really look at any of those things. So very, you know, we're, we're just looking at, at growth and, and yield quantities. We need to really be looking at sugars, proteins, fats, and oils. And I might add that on uh, a leaf that has, it does have the fat and it's thicker and it has a heavier sugar, sugar doesn't freeze as quickly. So plants that have a higher sugar content or healthier also can handle colder temperatures in the spring. My question would be, and for customers as well, how do you find that? Um, how do you know that what you're eating is good, and how can you tell? Step number one is let, let's make sure that what we're eating is organic. Now organic, by definition, is not about what's in the food. It's about what's not in the food. Mm -hmm. So you know there's not herbicides, pesticides, chemical nitrate fertilizers or nitrite fertilizers that are going to cause unnormal, out-of-balance growth. It had to be fertilized with a healthy uh, protein type based fertilizer of some mm -hmm. sort. But the interesting thing is that in order to get a healthy crop, if you're an organic farmer, you have to be able to put the right things into your soil. Make sure that you're feeding your soil the right minerals and the right nutrients and create a more balanced environment even if an organic farmer doesn't really understand what he's doing or why he's doing it, he still has to do it to survive. Otherwise, he's going to be in the organic business a very short period of time, and then he's going to have to get back out and go conventional because he can't maintain his yields and what he's doing. So that's step number one. There's other things that you can do. I mean, when you're at a farmer's market, ask your farmer, what does he do? Ask him. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're, you know, local, if you're growing it in your garden, just make sure, I mean, you don't have to be super scientific about it. Sure, we are here at Azure, but even, you know, if you're growing it in your garden or whatever, it's not, a, you know, it's not about perfection. If you're putting a bunch of compost on, you're not putting any chemicals in, good chance that the bacteria in the compost is helping to break down the sand and stuff in the soil, and you're getting at least most of what you need. It's a lot more imbalanced than anything you could get from conventional agriculture. So those are some, some beginner's tips for that. Another thing, just watch what you're eating. I mean, don't eat single, you know, sugars, very simple monoglyceride type sugars. Just don't eat that kind of stuff. Make sure that the proteins that you eat are, are balanced and rounded. You can also get a, you know, for your vegetables, if you want to invest in it, um, you can get a bricks meter and measure the bricks, which is actually your sugar content. Sugar. Okay. And yeah. the more complex the sugar is, the higher it's going to read on your bricks meter. So that's... So you would just take the actual fruit or the leaves. What is it, fruit or leaves that you, you put in? You can either do either one. Okay. You crush and you smash that. it and, and read the sugar content. Read the sugar content. Obviously, the leaf is going to have a lower sugar content than the fruit in a general sense, I mean, with most mm -hmm. plants. But if you, if you compare that against other similar, and there are charts available on what the bricks should be for various vegetables and okay. fruits. And I think uh, to add with that, you can, you can also taste it. You can taste it. Yeah. Once you refine your taste, so you've been used to eating healthy organic food, you bite into something Get a conventional potato after you've been eating organic ones for a taste while. The chemicals. It just like <laughs> you can't even. <laughs> yeah. It's just very very obvious. Right. Learn to know your farmer. Learn to be able to know where your food is coming from. But you know, there's some simple things we can do. Cutting out those simple sugars, eating organic, that goes a long long ways towards that goal. That's great. Thank you.